Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're going to be replacing the coolant flange and the crack pipe on a VR6 engine. So both of these parts are a very common leak point on almost all VR6 engines. The engine we're going to be doing this repair on is a 12-valve VR6 on my 98 GTI. The parts that we're going to be using for this repair are the Eurowise aluminum coolant flange housing, the 42 draft crack pipe, an OEM thermostat, and Pentacin Penafrost coolant. The tools we're going to need for this job are going to be hose clamp pliers, a ratchet of your choice, a number 5 Allen, a 10 millimeter socket, an 8 millimeter socket, and possibly an extension. Now, I got a little secret for you guys. I actually do the DIY before I shoot these intros and outros of the videos, so I get to give you a heads up on what happened. This DIY video went terrible. Um, I struggled with getting the coolant pipe off. I ended up having to take the entire front end off the car. It worked out really well though because I was able to evaluate some of the damage that I knew was there, as well as install a new fan belt and I was also able to clean up a little bit of wiring as well. Had I known that I was going to have to pull the front end off I would have done a couple of other repairs while I was in there but I'll have to save those repairs for another time. Now having to pull the front end just to replace those two parts is not really a normal thing. You can do these repairs without taking the front end off but having the front end off does make this job quite a bit easier. And it does go to show you that even the professionals struggle with things. There's really no reason I should have struggled on that repair. It's a repair I've done a bunch of times, but sometimes things just don't go your way. I tried and tried and tried and could not get this coolant pipe out of this car. It was basically oxidized into the block. And that made it really hard to get out, even with all of that stuff out of the way. And it's a good thing that I went ahead and did that because that pipe was leaking. And now that's something that I don't ever have to worry about again. All right, so the coolant pipe that we're going to be replacing is actually located right underneath the intake manifold and the flange is right down here. It's going to be kind of hard to see until we get some stuff out of the way. We're going to start by taking off this plastic guard and that's just three eight millimeter bolts. Set those in the magnetic tray and move this out of the way. Now because the condenser on this car is not hooked up I have the ability to move the line out of the way so I'm going to go ahead and carefully move that so that frees up a little bit more room. And we're going to go ahead and drain the coolant. The way I'm going to drain the coolant on this job is I'm going to take the lower radiator hose off and let it drain out of the radiator. This is also going to be a great opportunity to do a really thorough coolant flush. I got my hose clamp pliers and I'm just going to go ahead and take the clamp off the lower hose which is down here on the driver's side. Hopefully the clamp's in a good spot so you can get right on it. I'm actually going to go ahead and get this wiring harness out of the way. This is a twist lock connector, so you simply twist it and work the connector apart. This is going to give me even more room to do this repair. Now that's tucked neatly out of the way. Should have a little bit more room to get down in here and get this clamp off. All right, now that the lower coolant hose on the radiator is off, I'm going to go ahead and pull the upper hose off and just let all the coolant drain out. And of course, before you take that coolant hose off, you want to make sure that you have something to drain the coolant into. That way you're not just dumping a bunch of coolant onto the floor. You also want to make sure that we are disposing of coolant properly when we're done. So I went ahead and pulled the upper radiator hose off. So we've got a lot of coolant drained out of the system. Basically, the radiator is going to be pretty much empty. We're still going to get more coolant out when we take the flange off and when we take the cross pipe off. Now I'm going to go ahead and also take the rest of this hose and I'm, gonna just, I'm not going to take it out of the car because I don't want to mess with the little clamp, but I'm going to get this out of the way as well. And when I do that, I'm going to lose more coolant, so I want to make sure I place my drain pan in an appropriate spot so that the coolant goes into the drain pan and again, not onto the floor. I just move the clamp off of the flange onto the hose and I'm going to go ahead and pull the hose right off. If you're struggling to get some of these hoses off, a couple of tricks is to spray them with a little bit of silicone spray and that'll help loosen it up or take a pick or a screwdriver and you can kind of work the hose off a little bit. You just want to be really careful not to puncture the hose. That little trick works well for vacuum lines too. And we're losing more coolant. Now this should get the bulk of our coolant out of the system but with each component that we remove we are going to lose more coolant so don't just take the bucket out from underneath the car. 
there's still some coolant left in this hose. I'm just going to go ahead and let that drain out. Now I'm going to carefully move this out of the way. This was a pretty nasty coolant system. All right, so that's out of the way. That brown connector is actually one of the ECTs. You can see we got some wiring loom we got to move, a couple more coolant hoses, and we'll be able to take the flange off and then move on to the pipe. All right, our next step is going to be to get this bracket out of the way. We're going to unplug our coolant temperature sensors and then take the three bolts out so that we can get access to some of these back hoses. There's a 10 millimeter here at the top. And get that out of the way. Put that up in our tray. Now our bracket is loose. You can leave these wire looms in if you'd like to. I like to get them out of the way. That's just one less thing for me to work around. And these just pull right out. Set that in our tray. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect our ECTs. And get that connector out of the way. Once our ECTs are disconnected, we can kind of pull this loom up a bit so that it's not hanging down in our way. I'm going to just tuck them up here. You can, you can zip tie them up out of your way if you want, but now that exposes the entire coolant flange. All right, next we're going to take the flange off of the car. The flange is held on by three bolts that are five millimeter Allen. Two long ones and one short one. I like to use quarter inch drive here because the space is kind of small. I also don't recommend using a ball end socket. I recommend using a flat end socket at least to break the bolts loose. After you break the bolts loose, if you want to use a ball end socket, then that's fine. But if you round this out, it makes it really difficult to get out. And when you use ball end, you're more likely to round them out than you are if you use a regular flat end. I will say the best quality ones are snap-on, but you can avoid the situation altogether just by using a flat one. So there's one bolt here. Right on the other side of the coolant flange is the second bolt. It's a little bit hidden. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that one. And then we're going to discover that the third one is actually at the back of the flange. This one's kind of in a blind spot that you're not really going to be able to see. You're probably going to also need to put an extension on the end of your ratchet. Again, if you struggle to find the location of that bolt, look at your new one and that'll give you an idea of where it's located. So you can kind of see from the position of my extension right here, that is on the bolt right now. And I'm going to... And I'm going to go ahead and not only loosen that one, but take it all the way out. Now this one in the back is a short one, which makes doing this quite a bit easier. It actually fell out and down, so I'm going to leave it there because we're going to have this all the way out. And it's going to give us a lot more room to grab that bolt we just dropped. Here's a good visual of the length of the front two. You'll notice that you're going to start losing a little bit more coolant as well. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and kind of rock that loose. We're going to make sure our drip tray is in the right position as to catch as much coolant as possible. And now we're going to go ahead and take our other coolant lines off. There's one here at the back that goes to the thermostat. That's the one that attaches to the lower portion of the radiator. So I'm going to get that out of the way altogether. Now that my flange is all the way loose, I can take this other clamp off. You can also disconnect the fan, which is just below here you want to and get that out of the way as well. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Looks like my fan connector is a little bit corroded, so I'm going to add that to the list of things that we're going to have to fix. That did open up a little bit more room. I can go ahead and remove this clamp and get our final hose on the flange out of the way. Now they make picks for doing this, specifically for removing coolant pipes. I highly recommend them. I have a snap on one. I just left it at the shop. So we're improvising with a screwdriver here, folks. Got the hose off. I'm going to go ahead and pull this entire contraption out of the vehicle. Here again, you can see just how much rust and nasty stuff was inside of this cooling system. Also, this stuff does not need to go on there. The seals will seal it just fine. There's no need to add anything else to help seal this. 
All right, now we have the flange off the car, which believe it or not, is actually the easy part of this job. Getting the pipe off, which is right down here, is considerably more difficult than just doing the flange. Now you can actually see where this coolant flange was mounted. This is the old gasket. So we're gonna, of course, take that off. We're gonna be replacing that with the new flange. What we also wanna make sure we do is clean the mounting surface where the coolant flange was. You can see all this nasty grime and stuff on here. Well, we wanna make sure we get that out of there before we put our new flange on. Otherwise, we can create the potential for a leak. We're gonna use some Scotch-Brite and we're gonna clean that off really well. All right, there we go. We got the bulk of that cleaned off. It's gonna be good to go when we put our flange back on. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and replace that pipe. All right, so we are down here in the engine compartment. We have the coolant flange completely out of the way. Now we're going to be working on this water pipe here. This water pipe is actually just pushed into the block at the back of the water pump. So if that were all that it was, we could just pull this pipe right out and not have to worry about it. But the wonderful thing is there's a coolant line right back here that we need to take off. It's almost impossible for me to get a camera down in there so that you guys can see it. But while you're doing this repair, if you actually just push this pipe back a little bit, you'll be able to see the clamp and it's really not that hard to get to. It's pretty much right here below where this bolt is. Now, if you are also taking out your secondary air system, that makes doing this job quite a bit easier. All right, so we're going to get our hose clamp pliers. And we are going to shove them way down in here. And I'm sorry, all you guys are gonna see is my hand for just a minute, but I'm gonna get on the clamp and pull it off. have quite a bit more taken apart than I had uh, I had initially intended on. You know, this is a great example for you DIY folks. Even us pros run into issues sometimes. I struggled and struggled and struggled to get that coolant pipe off. So I went ahead and took the front end of the car off because, well, it needed a little attention anyway. And this gives me a crystal clear view of doing the pipe. It's going to make putting the flange on over there easier, as well as show you guys exactly what you're going to be doing. If you're doing this the way that I had initially intended, you're not going to be able to see some of these things. So this may work out actually really well for you guys so that you'll be able to see what's going on, even though when you're doing the repair, you're working blind. Now you can see that bolt. That is one of three bolts that holds secondary air pump on. So I'm going to kind of walk you guys in here. You'll be able to see it right back there, right where the light on there. There's three of those bolts. These look like they're a little bit stripped out, which just is further confirmation that someone has actually been in here before doing work, or trying to do work, I should say. So I have a number six Allen with a ball because the angle on this is a little bit weird. I'm going to go ahead and take these three bolts that hold the bracket that hold the pump on. Luckily, these came out pretty easy. Again, the only ball end Allens that I really recommend you use are the snap-on ones. I've tried several others, and none of them really hold up very well. I've rounded out plenty of these Allen bolts with other brands, so stick to snap-on. They're the best, and what that does is that just lets you kind of get on it at an angle instead of straight on. I got my pump loose. I'm gonna go ahead and take my lines off. Looks like someone's made a repair to the secondary air pump pipe as well. So we'll see what that's about when we get the pipe off. There's that one. And I'll uh, take this clamp off. This end off of here. You know, I hate that I had to do all of this stuff to, uh, <laughs> to do this dang coolant flange and, uh, and pipe, but like I said before, it's a really good example of how sometimes things just don't go well. Even if you've done a repair a hundred times, there may be that one time where things go sideways on you. So a lesson for you DIYers, don't get discouraged just because one thing doesn't really go your way. Keep at it, keep trying, 
and, uh, and keep learning and, and getting better. So I'm going to go ahead and rock this pump out of the way, unplug it. So now we can see our coolant pipe plain as day. Here's our pipe. I got very easy access to the clamp, which will be no problem to take off now. That comes right off when you gain all this room. And now, hopefully, this pipe comes right out. We've lost the majority of the coolant in the system here by doing this repair. And there's the rest of it. Now, there wasn't any sealant on the end of that pipe, but it was basically oxidized inside the the block where it goes into the back of the water pump. Just like we did with the flange, I'm going to get some Scotch-Brite and get that cleaned up. All right, here we can see this is the port that the coolant pipe goes into. The water pump is just on the other side of that. So I'm going to grab the pipe, I'm going to lubricate the seal, and we're going to install the pipe first. Go in the block end. We're going to install that behind the wiring harness. Now that seal is going to be a little bit bigger than the factory one. Now you want to take a lot of care not to just manhandle this pipe in. We don't want to end up rolling the gasket or pinching the gasket and creating a coolant leak because we're not going to really know until we get it all the way installed. All right, I got the pipe properly seated. I'm going to go ahead and put our coolant hose on right here. Get our clamp put on. Now that I have the pipe installed, I'm going to go ahead and build the flange and we're going to install that. All right, we got our old flange here. We got our new flange here. We need to swap our coolant temperature sensors. I bought a new thermostat so we can go ahead and install a new thermostat as well. That way we don't really have to worry about doing anything to this new flange for hopefully a long time. Also, the other thing I really love about this Eurowise coolant flange is we don't need to reuse any of these bolts. It comes with new bolts that install the thermostat end to the housing, as well as new bolts that install the entire flange to the cylinder head. This is that orange goo sealant that I was talking about that there's really absolutely no need to use. But enough about that, let's go ahead and take our coolant temperature sensors out. And we want to make sure we want to make sure that they go back in the same location that they came out of so that we're not stressing our wiring harness at all. I'm not worried about those clamps because we have all new clamps and seals in the bag. So we're going to go ahead and take these out. They may stick a little bit, just kind of work them a little bit and they should eventually come out. Set that flange to the side. We'll get our new flange, open up our seal bag. These are the seals for the coolant temp sensors. We're going to go ahead and put some we're going to go ahead and put some dielectric silicone on these and install them in the location in which they came out of. And if we don't have the orientation of the sensor quite right, that's okay. We'll be able to rotate it once we get it installed. We can plug it in and make sure that we're not putting any stress on the harness based on its orientation. All right, we got the sensors installed. Let's go ahead and put our clips in. Again, we can go ahead and rotate those once we get the flange installed into the vehicle. Now it's time to put our thermostat in. We're going to flip this over. We'll get our thermostat. We got a new seal in the Eurowise kit. If you're going to make this repair, it's a good idea to just go ahead and put a new thermostat in at the time of doing this repair. Now, one other thing that you really want to pay attention to when you are installing these parts is the orientation of the thermostat. The thermostat clearly can only really go in one way. There's no way that this would fit and still be able to put the other end on. So obviously the thermostat goes in this way, but you want to make sure you're paying attention to the orientation of this little valve here. Typically what I do is I just put it the same way that the other one came out. Because this has clearly been replaced, I'm not a hundred I'm not a hundred percent sure I trust it. But we're gonna go ahead and take it out and see where it's oriented anyway. So you may immediately notice that this is not a factory thermostat. Uh, it's a made in China thermostat. 
So make sure when you swap your thermostat or replace your thermostat that it goes back the same place that the old one came out. From what I remember, this is the direction that it needs to go. This is actually not in the repair manual, despite the fact that Volkswagen says to make note of its orientation the way it's supposed to be oriented is not in the repair manual. So I'm going to put it like this and just remember that if I have any overheating issues, this is probably the source of my problem. I'm going to go ahead and install the cover for the thermostat. Oh, and I went ahead, before I put this on, I went ahead and installed the gasket around the thermostat. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on. I want to make sure you tighten these down evenly as to not pinch the gasket. I'll go ahead and snug those up with my ratchet. You see, you see the paint cracked a little bit. I know painting this white is probably a huge mistake. I think I had mentioned before on another video, but it's kind of fun. A little pop of white under the hood is cool. And uh, at some point I'm assuming I'm going to have to do a head gasket on this VR. And at that point, I'll probably take this back off and have it powder coated. All right, so here's our fully built coolant and thermostat housing. I'm going to go ahead and drop the last gasket in, and we're going to go ahead and install it on the car. So we're going to go ahead and put our coolant flange back on the vehicle. I got my new bolts from the Eurowise kit. We also want to make sure that we put a little bit of lubricant in this port as well. This is going to sit in the vehicle just like this. Now I'm just going to double check and make sure I got this pipe all the way installed. What you don't want to do is get this installed and then use the bolts to push the water pipe in. You want to make sure that the pipe is already installed and then install the housing. So let's go ahead and get that there. Get it all worked on and that's going to sit nice just like that. We get our bolts, the two long ones for the front. I like to go ahead and start those by hand. You can even put them in the end of your socket and start it that way. Now you can see this is going to be quite a bit easier for me because I have the entire front end off the car. You may struggle a little bit more without having this much room to work. So we're going to go ahead and start those by hand. I don't usually turn them in more than a couple of threads before I do the back one. The back one's going to be a little bit trickier because we're kind of working blind even at this space. If you had taken the battery out, uh, this job would be a little bit easier, but I didn't do that. On some of the newer ones, the 24 valves especially, you really have to take the battery out. Now a little trick while working on the back one is you can take some butyl and put it in the end of the bolt and then put your socket on it. If you don't have that, you can use a little bit of silicone or even a little bit of the lubricant that you use just to hold the bolt on the end of the socket. That way you're not dropping it a hundred times. We locate our bolt hole and we start that one as well. I'm going to actually leave that one in there and tighten the rest of them with my ratchet. It's one of the nice things about having multiple ways to tighten bolts is that you can leave that there and run this in with another one. I'm going to run this in until they're snug with the ball end. Then I'm going to get the flat end one and then snug it down the last little bit. All right, we're going to go ahead and finish snugging this top one up. We're going to do the bottom one, which will go quite a bit faster. Now, these are pretty small bolts, so the torque's not going to be very high. Probably looking in the 10 newton meter range or so. I'm going to go ahead and snug the back one up. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my front two with the flat one. And there we go, we've installed the coolant flange and the crack pipe. So we're all done, we can fire the car up and be on a test. Oh, no, wait, we're not done yet. We gotta finish hooking up all our coolant lines. Uh, for me, I have to put the entire front end of the vehicle back on, run my wires back where they're supposed to go. So I'm gonna get the front end put back on and be back with you guys when we're ready to put the hoses on, run the wire looms back where they go, and then fill it with coolant. So I have the front end of the GTI put back together and, and all the wiring harnesses routed. So basically this is where we would have left off had we not had to take the whole front end off to get that pipe out. From this point, what I like to do is I like to start by hooking up the coolant hoses so that I can actually start filling the cooling system while I'm plugging the wires back in. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little silicone on the three points where the hoses connect. I'm gonna do the back one first. So we'll go ahead and put our clamps back on. You wanna give the hose a little bit of a tug as well just to make sure that it's on all the way. 
This is the hose that connects to the lower radiator hose. Next, we're going to do this one here that goes to the secondary coolant pump. And the final one is the one that goes to the upper radiator hose. And the final one is the one that goes to the upper radiator. When you're putting these hose clamps on, make sure you put them on in an orientation that makes it easy to take them back off. Hopefully this isn't something you're going to be doing very often, but we always want to try and make it as easy as possible on the next go-round. I'm going to go ahead and put this hose back up on the upper radiator neck. All right, give all our hoses a little tug, make sure they're on all the way. Now we're going to hook our connectors back up. We'll start with the brown one. We'll pull the blue one and the yellow one down from where we tucked them out of the way. Remember that if we need to, we can go ahead and rotate the sensors in the proper orientation and plug those three in. We need to put our bracket back on. We can put the wires we can put the wire looms in the bracket first. That'll hold the bracket so that we don't have to worry about dropping it. Line that back up. That was a that was a 10 millimeter bolt. So we'll get that put on. I'm going to grab my ratchet. We're going to tighten that down. And that's the bulk of the job. Now we do need to fill the system with coolant. Because of the condition of the coolant, I'm not going to fill it with the good coolant that I bought. I'm going to just actually fill it with regular tap water, which for longevity is kind of a no-no. You want to make sure you're using the proper water and the proper coolant. But I'm going to be flushing this cooling system out to try and get rid of some of that junk that was built up in there. To fill the system and check for leaks, I'm going to go ahead and only fill it with water. If I knew this was going to be the end of the job, I'd go ahead and mix my pentafrost coolant, fill the system up, and check for leaks. But we're going to go ahead and do that with water. No need to rush here. We're going to just go ahead and fill it to the coolant reservoir is full. One thing you can do to help the cooling system fill faster is actually take this small line off and that'll help push the air out a little bit faster, but not too terribly much. Also, if you have one of those vacuum machines that'll pull the cooling system into a vacuum before you fill it, that works really well too. But I don't have one of those here at the house, so I'm just going to fill it the old fashioned way. We lost a lot of coolant, basically emptying the radiator and most of the coolant in the engine. So we're just going to take our time and fill this up. Another thing that will help you bleed the air out of the cooling system a little faster is to raise the front of the vehicle. That will help the air bubble up to the top. That's best to do while the vehicle is running. You can see the coolant level slowly sinking down here in the reservoir. One thing we can also do is if we come over here to one of the radiator hoses and give it a squeeze, that will speed up the process a bit as well. Now I don't hear anything pouring on the floor, so that means I must have got all the coolant lines on. I tell you, that's happened to me more than once where I did a cooling system repair, thought I was done, went to fill it with coolant, and a bunch of coolant came pouring back out of the bottom. It does happen. I'm glad I don't hear that today. We had enough struggles with this DIY. We didn't need anything else. The more air that you get out before you start the car, usually the faster the cooling system will bleed. I have an 11 quart drain pan underneath the car, and it's about three quarters full, so we lost quite a bit of coolant. I can still tell there's an air pocket in here. You can actually feel it inside the hose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the garage, start the car, let it run for a few seconds, and then fill it again. Before you start the car after a job like this, you want to do a quick sweep and make sure you didn't leave any tools or anything laying around. All right, got the garage open. We're going to fire it up and watch our coolant level. I'm going to go ahead and bring the RPM up just a little bit and try and bleed some of the air out of this cooling system. Now remember when you're working with coolant, you always want to be really careful. This coolant gets hot pretty quick and you want to avoid burning yourself. Make sure if you need to wear safety glasses, you're wearing safety glasses. 
I like to wear gloves on most repairs that I do to keep any of this nasty coolant or oil or anything off of my skin. The noise you're hearing now is the after run coolant pump running and it's pumping coolant through the system. It usually runs for a minute or two after you shut the car off. Now because it's late and I would have three cars to move, I'm not going to take this car on a test drive. I will be test driving it tomorrow just on a quick drive, then pull it back in, recheck the coolant level, and if I need to go ahead and top it off. I may actually just put a touch of coolant in it to make sure that everything's well lubricated. But again, we're going to work on flushing all that junk out of the cooling system. All right, so there you have it, a full DIY, plus watching me struggle on, uh, on replacing a crack pipe and coolant flange on a VR6 engine. Again, if it's a Mark IV or newer, you are going to have to take the battery out to give yourself enough room to work. This one does have a lot of room with the battery still in. Also, make sure you dispose of your coolant properly, take your car on a quick quality control test drive, and then recheck your coolant. I also like to recheck the coolant the next day after the car's gotten up to temperature and had time to cool back down. That almost always takes care of any final air pockets in the system. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, and the beers multiple of the day uh, was Daisy Cutter Pale Ale out of Chicago. This is a brewery I've actually been to a few times with some friends of mine. Awesome place, awesome beer, downtown Chicago, very cool spot. I highly recommend it.